Erica is always looking for that big idea. She's a producer by nature. She understands that we're in a rapidly evolving medium and she was ready to evolve rapidly with it. She helped create this interactive experience that really didn't exist at the time. What's really unique about Erica is that she's not only a content creator, she's a content innovator. When I was little, I used to put on plays. I was the one in my family that used to pull all my cousins together and say, you're doing the costumes and you're doing the scripts and you do the programs. It was kind of like little rascals all the time. All of our parents had to watch our performances, whether they liked it or not. We always had a, a, um, an interest in drama and theater, and we both went to Syracuse to be um, theater majors. As a theater major for your first two years, you're not really allowed to perform. You have to work behind the scenes. It made me have to think about the whole picture, and I just fell in love with production. I left the theater department to pursue film, and uh, Erica left to pursue communications. I went and just made an appointment to speak to a few professors at the Newhouse School. Uh, one of the professors that I spoke to, Peter Moeller, he really made me delve into myself and really put a name to what I wanted to do. He explained to me that I was always a producer at heart and perhaps that was my path. And we found out that it was an organization that existed called the Black Artists League. And we thought, hey, this is a great opportunity for us to start this organization up again. The main the point of that was to give students who weren't theater majors, who weren't film majors, who weren't voice majors or art majors a chance to display their creativity. We had one of the first plays at the Shining Auditorium. We had art exhibits. We had a talent show. We did like what we thought were like some cutting edge things, you know, really just trying to find different ways to express ourselves as artists. And the fact that I had so many supportive teachers and so many supportive mentors at Syracuse was the thing, again, that gave me the confidence and the inspiration to, to do what I do today. Erica is one of those alums who has given back in so many ways. I mean, from the time she graduated, she's been involved with the school. I think she takes a lot of personal satisfaction in mentoring students because she understands how important that is for young people early in their careers. After I graduated from Syracuse, somebody said that CBS News was starting this new show and I ran upstairs and just made a cold call to CBS. A few days later, I got a call that I was meeting with somebody named Andrew Hayward, only to find out that Andrew Hayward was the executive producer of the show. And I spoke with him and I told him that because I had an internship already, I really wanted to be a producer on his show and I knew I could. And he asked me when I graduated and I told him I just graduated from college and he was like, let's start slower. First of all, she got to Syracuse, and that meant a lot to me. It was a great pedigree from a terrific university, but it also showed her focus and determination uh, to be a journalist. We were working on a program called 48 Hours, which was very, very innovative. And to be frank, we were kind of making it up as we went along. It didn't phase Erica at all. She was flexible. Uh, she was ingenious. She found solutions to problems. I could tell that uh, this was just the beginning of a long and successful career for her. One thing that had always been of interest to me were uh, children. and creating positive in images in the media for children, especially children of color. And I got this amazing opportunity to move to Washington, D.C. and be part of BET. And I went there and I was able to create a show called Story Porch. Celebrities would be on a porch, little children would sit around them and they would read stories. That was a, a type of show that did not exist. It was, it was a benefit to children of color. It was a great contrast to some of the other things that you would see on the network. With, with digital media, kids can lean forward and really be involved, and be involved in a way they can't be on just watching television. She has tremendous talent, but she also has a gut instinct about what's going to work. And all of the projects that she's ever worked on, you know, they've always become these these huge events. She knows what it means to value the voice of children, what it means to create dynamic content, and how you put those two together to create award-winning experiences. She brings a wide range of knowledge and skill areas to the work, both from the standpoint of the industry having to do with transmedia development and having to do with how you actually make something come to life. You know, she realized a dream of working at some of the top companies dedicated to children's television and you know she she's done it. More and more television shows we're now embracing online. What I hope it still doesn't happen but I hope it happens more that more 
the TV shows and the online could merge more because when that happens, that's where the real magic happens. When everybody works together and shares the information, that's when the experience for whoever the audience is can really come alive. She just has an idea of what they want, what is entertaining, what's fun, and what works, and actually teaches kids. She did incredibly innovative and beautiful work. One thing that really makes me who I am is something that I went through when I was 23. I had just, I was two years out of Syracuse and uh, I had this amazing job at 48 hours. I found out at that time I had something called Cushing's disease, which was, I had a, a pituitary tumor and I had to have brain surgery. Everybody was starting their careers and it just felt like everybody was moving on and here I had a a stop. I came back after the surgery and I thought I was well and they came to find out that actually I wasn't and they had to kind of do it all over again. That never stopped her and never made her want to give up and just do something easy and that's definitely very impressive and admirable and I'm definitely um, you know in awe of her and all that she's accomplished. And then when I really get down, I always say to myself, well, this is, this is easy, this is not brain surgery. I mean, I did brain surgery and I did that, so nothing else can be as hard as that. So I push myself.